God for that uh, choir rendition. And it's going to be our turn now to sing. Yeah, before we start to sing, we want to appreciate uh, everybody in this gathering. As you have come to worship with us, God will bless you. Uh, the devotional services have just started, and uh, we had a prelude, organ prelude from Brother Godwin, and then uh, a choir rendition by our choir, God's Choir, composed by Ray Overholt. And now is our turn to sing. Let us begin with that popular uh, number in our CGS number 12, All Hail the Power, number 12. All hail the power of Jesus' name, and let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem. We we'll listen to the tune and sing the first four verses, one to four, first four verses after the tune. Seven from the CGS 487 from our collected gospel song. Hack on the highway of life a sound as crested waves of ocean rower. We want to take only two verses here and want to sing it heartily after the tune from the organist. 487. <laughs> Thank you. 
Catholic. Let's take another number from SSNS 590. <clears throat> Secret Song of and Sorrow. 590. I've given up all to Jesus. Yes. And Jesus will bless us for that. Amen. 590. We'll listen from, from the organist, the tune, and we'll sing the first two verses. <laughs> we have given all to Jesus. Yes. We have surrendered all to Jesus. Yes. And we want him to take all about us Amen. in this life to bless us Amen. and in heaven to have a place. Amen. We want to take us three again, God. John Day Another one, I am trusting the Lord Jesus. 641. SSNS 641. We are trusting the Lord. Yes. And He will not let us down. Yes. He will surely answer our prayers. Yes. Let's take uh, two verses from that one, 641. We'll listen to the uh, orchestra with that tune and then we'll sing it. 641. I am trusting the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
song before prayer will be 533 three of SSNS. 533 three of SSNS. Tenderly guide us, O oh Shepherd. <coughs> We'll do a little kind of exercise here before we pray. The first verse, we'll stand up to sing it. The second verse, we'll sit down to sing it. And the third verse, we'll stand up to sing it. And we'll remain standing to be led in prayer. I hope that's very clear. Okay, we'll listen to the tune and we'll stand up to sing from verse 1. <clears throat> experience. Amen. We want to renew our salvation. Amen. We want to have genuine repentance. Amen. We want to have godly sorrow, Amen. contrite spirit, Amen. broken hearted, that come before thee in penitence Amen. to the mercy seat. Amen. Nothing in our hand we are brought to thee, but just by thy grace alone. Amen. Lord, come down today. Amen. Come down this morning. Amen. Permeate us the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit take control. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit take control of our services. Amen. We are praying this morning. Amen. In the next few hours, the Portland Camp meeting will start. Amen. There will be a great revival. Amen. We believe that. Amen. And the spillover will touch us. Amen. The spillover will touch us. Amen. The blessing will touch us. Amen. We believe you, Lord. Amen. Lord, this is time we want to make our election sure. Amen. The battle is ranging. 
everything around is showing that look the battle the war is very hot lord we want to be in this field of the and focus on thee lord help us Amen. revive us Amen. revive our house Amen. revive the church Amen. bless us oh lord Amen. the spirit of calm meeting let Amen. it abide with us Amen. as it's going on in portland Amen. soon we will start our own Amen. lord as we are preparing prepare our heart Amen. prepare our heart Amen. make it a follow ground Amen. that we will have cause to bl to glorify you Amen. bless us mightily Amen. endow the preacher this morning Amen. speak to us oh lord Amen. And when we shall leave this place, we want to go home rejoicing. Amen. Because we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Once again, good morning to you all. And you are all welcome to our devotional service. God bless you for coming. For those uh, of our people online watching us, we thank you too for joining us. We are the Apostle of Church located at uh, number 13, Penguin Road, DA53EP Bexley. Please do take uh, some time to pray to your satisfaction after this uh, service ended. The Lord God will bless you for doing so. Amen. Our pastor, Brother Mark Mvanderawa, and his family are presently in Portland with some delegation of 34 people from United Kingdom. Let us remember them in our prayers and continue to pray for the success of the Portland Camp Meeting. We are all encouraged to watch the services online with our family and we pray that the Lord will bless all who take time to do so. Amen. Today, this afternoon, we shall have Y for C, Youth for Christ, at 2.30 p.m. And all youths are encouraged to attend. In the evening today, we are going to have youth, <coughs> excuse me, youth service at 5 p.m. On Wednesday, we will have Bible study at 7.30 p.m. And on Friday, we are going to have prayer meeting at 8 p.m. This Saturday, by God's grace, is going to be the turn of men's prayer at 8 a.m. in the morning. Next Sunday, with Jesus Tarries, we shall have the following. Sunday school for all ages at 10 a.m., devotional service at 11.15 a.m., as we are doing now, and there will be family prayer instead of uh, evening service next Sunday, which is uh, within the hours of 4 to 6 p.m. Regarding the UK annual camp meeting, if you are registered to attend our UK annual camp meeting, please ensure that you make full payment by the end of this month, which is the 38th of June. Should you need any assistance in order to attend this UK camp meeting, kindly see our camp coordinator in the person of Brother Lighton Abimbola, and we believe all will be sorted out. We are in form of a plan for uh, Israel pilgrimage next year, which is about 11 months time now. We are asked to inform us that the ministry is planning a two days of airport transfer plus seven full days of pilgrimage time tour with Guy. Israel pilgrimage for late May to early June 2023, 11 months time to this time now, if Jesus tarries till then. Please know that the pilgrimage will cost 1150 per person for hotel accommodation, including breakfast and dinner, various sites, entry and coach touring with guide, flight costs not included. Those interested should text or call Brother David Ojo directly on this mobile number, 07956. 871242. So you can be included on the Israel May 23 pilgrimage forum. For more specific details and to pay a deposit to register your interest, please see Brother David Ojo. Note that interested brethren must be COVID 19 double jabbed, which is Israel 
travel requirements. Now we continue our service. We're now going to have the first special from the choir, Send a Little Time, composed by John W. Peterson. After that, we'll listen to the scriptural reading from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. And then second, or the last special, which is a duet, Day by Day. This will be presented to us by the Ajibolas, composer Oscar Hornfeldt. Then we'll listen to the word of God, after which we are encouraged to stay behind a little while and pray down the blessings of God upon ourselves and our family. And God will bless us. Amen. First special.
scripture reading for this morning devotional service has been selected from the epistle to the Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 to 18, and then 22 to 25. Hebrews 12, 14 to 18, and 22 to 25. 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defied. 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. 18. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, and darkness, and tempest. 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, Amen. and unto the city of the living God, Amen. the heavenly Jerusalem, Amen. and to an innumerable company of angels, Amen. to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, Amen. which are written in heaven, Amen. and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, Amen. and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Yeah. 25. And the last. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, who refused him that speak on hurt, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven.
and every one of us. Amen. That is our hope. That is our aim. That is why we're here. Yes. That we might reach that promised land. Amen. After having all said and done, Jesus himself will welcome us in and say, Amen. well done. Come on in. Amen. 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 Please turn with me to Jude chapter 3, Jude verse 3 Amen. rather. Jude has only one chapter, Jude verse 3. And um, we just want to take verse 3 there and uh, have a little thought upon it this morning. And I pray God to speak to us himself. Amen. Jude 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. As we read that verse, I'm guessing you would hear, you would have heard some words there that you know, possibly could have struck your mind. Diligence, needful, earnestly, contend, faith, once delivered unto the saints. I read that verse again, verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. It was needful. Yes. <laughs> and Paul, or rather Jude, gave all diligence to pen this down, took him time and energy. And what he was saying there is that there is a reason I was not just wasting my time when I took time to write this down. That you should earnestly contend for the faith. You know, in Christendom, we don't generally talk of contention. No. Contention, we don't, it's not necessarily a positive thing. No. But in this case, it's an absolute. Yes. In this case, it's a must. Yes. In this case, it is do or die. Mm. Literally, you do it or you're going to die. Earnestly contend for the faith. The faith. That package, the faith, that was once delivered unto the saints. And you know, Jesus who knew everything, right down from when he came, that once, Turn with me to Luke chapter 18. He looked down through the ages. He saw what would be going on today. He saw what would be going on through the ages. And I'm going to read part B of that verse. Um, okay, no problem. Let me take the whole verse. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? This is Jesus talking. There must have been something he saw. There must have been a reason why he asked. He, Jesus, asked that faith. Uh, asked that question, rather. That, nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? In other words, will I actually find it at all? Or will it have been snuffed out? Will it have disappeared altogether? When we're talking of faith, what are we talking of? The same type, the same quality, the same, the, 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 the same faith that was once delivered by Jesus Christ himself to the saints. What is the essence of the faith? 
The essence of the faith is the fact that through Jesus Christ and what he came to do, he can deliver our souls from eternal hell. Yes. Turn with me to Acts chapter 26 verse 18. We're defining what the faith is. The faith. Je uh, Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. Yes. And from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. And inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. There is a whole host of intertwined wonder in that verse, that single verse, that the gospel has come to do. To open our eyes. To turn us from darkness to light. We're not just talking of physical darkness, maybe they switch off the light here. No, no, no. We're talking of spiritual darkness that would have condemned each and every one of us to an eternity of hell. When we're talking of eternity, you're talking of time without time. You're talking of once it's once you have started into it, there is no end. You cannot say, okay, right, I've been in it for now 20 minutes, there's three more hours to come. You're wasting your time. You can also, okay, I've not been in it for 10 years. There's only five more years to come. Okay, uh, no, you're wasting your time. You cannot even say, I've not been in it for 10,000 years. One million years. However long, oh, hopefully, there's only a few more years to come. Or a few, time without time. Yeah. And that is where millions of eternal souls are heading for. As you're sitting right down now listening to me, you are heading for eternity. Mm -hmm. But this morning, you can make a decision that will mark you down Amen. for eternal glory. Amen. Amen. As we heard this morning, Amen. that repentance, take it. Don't joke with it. No. Do the needful. You will, it will give you a right about turn. Amen. A right about turn from hell and damnation to the glory of God. Amen. The same faith. So, this, why is this faith so important? We've just discussed it. Because it is through that faith that souls can be saved. Mm -hmm. It is through that faith that souls can be snatched from eternal destruction. Your life, my life, depends on it. The life of our children who are coming up behind us depends on it. And God help us to be a defender of the faith. Amen. When you are saved, when you have tasted of this salvation of Jesus Christ, it is incumbent on you. It is mandatory on you. It is a charge given you by God himself to defend that faith. And if it means with your life, God help me, God help you to do it. Amen. Faith. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith? These defenders of the faith, they are Christians with a difference. What I mean by Christians with a difference? Yeah, it's not, it's the, obviously, when we're talking of Christians, these people are not just those who, okay, my name is John, or my name is Noah, or my name is uh, Matthew, so I'm a Christian. They're not nominal Christians. These people have done the first works. What is that first works? They have repented, genuine repentance. In fact, we'll come to that later on. These people, they are Christians of a different caliber. What I mean by different caliber, they are Christians indeed. Why? As Revelation 17, 14 tells us, these people are the called. They have been called among everybody. The whole world is being called. But only a few seem to catch and perceive and answer, and answer that call. When they answer that call, Jesus Christ now chooses them. And they become called and chosen. And as they fight to the finish, as they decide and determine that no matter what's going to go on, I'm going to be true to this faith. I'm going to be true to my Jesus. I'm going to please him no matter what. And very soon they become, the, as, they, as they are on that way, and at the end, they become faithful. Right now, 
They are part of the church militant. Amen. But very soon, they will become part of the church triumphant. Amen. Battle will be over. Amen. It will be rewards and crowns. Amen. Oh yeah, it might be a tough going now. Hang in there, brother. Hang in there, sister. It's not going to be long anymore. Amen. May God help us. Amen. The church militant. The church within the church. You know, we're all gathered here. But I guess, I'm, I'm not I guess, I'm telling you from the word of God, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And as we sat here, God knows right now who is his. Are you his? Am I his? That's a question we have to ask for ourselves. Because as time is running out to another spiritual year and we're coming around to new time of camp meetings, time that we start and renew our spiritual year, God wants us to break up our fallow ground. Yeah. God wants us to, through prayer, as we read in Hosea 10, 12, seek for him. Seek the Lord till he come and reign righteousness. God can help us to do that. Yes. Otherwise, will be planted among thorns. You know, the farmer, when they go to do their planting, they've got to do a lot of hard work. They break up that hard fallow ground. Not only do they have to break it out, they've got to remove all the hard bits and pieces in it because it will scatter any growth. The growth that will result from that will be a, 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 a stunted, horrible kind of growth. And the fruit will not really come out. God is asking us spiritually, we need at this time to break up our fallow ground so that we can, t we can grow in him and what will come up will be wonderful. Amen. A time to examine ourselves, renew ourselves in prayer and preparation for the raining down of God's showers. Today is your day. Amen. Today is my day. Amen. And as we examine ourselves, God is saying that we should prove to our own selves don't worry to talk to anybody. You yourself, do a self-check. Why? Because Jesus is returning soon for those who are in the faith. Yes. Understand what I'm saying? Those who are in the faith. These are members of the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. They are members of the apostles apostolic faith. Understand what I'm saying? We, we praise God for this organization. Amen. The name is the Apostolic Faith Mission. Amen. But I'm talking of the Bible Apostolic Faith. God bless you. Let's turn together. Let's turn together. Because these people they're built upon a certain foundation yeah, Ephesians 2.20. Let's turn together. Ephesians 2.20. <laughs> and I built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith? So these people we're talking about, the called, the chosen, these people we're talking about, the members of the church of the firstborn, the redeemed, the mem true members of the apostolic faith. And let me explain something to you. If you are truly a member of the apostolic faith, understand what I'm saying. If you are truly a member of the apostolic faith, mission, not member as in your names are written out. Thank God we don't have register here. But if all that you hear all that has been taught you, all that has been fed you, you line up, you take care of it, I can guarantee you, you will be a true member of the true apostolic faith. Yes, but if you're here, if they come as they come, remember, when the children of Israel left Egypt, a lot of people left. The mixed multitude left. But may I ask of you, how many people of those who left Egypt actually entered Kenya? How many? 
two. Joshua and Caleb. That's real. <laughs> That's something to really think about. So what am I trying to say? Please, when you come, don't just come as they come. No. Come for what you need, business. Yes. Yes. Come to meet the Lord. Yes. And when you come and you meet the Lord, he will meet with you. Yes. Yes. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith on the earth? Mm -hmm. You know, these people, they have some prerequisites, some criteria, some qualifications that makes them defenders of the faith, mm -hmm. that makes them real members of the true apostolic faith, that makes them part of that church militant, that makes them part of the church of the firstborn, that makes them part of that church within the church. Yeah. And because they have these prerequisites, it also bears out fruits. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they have these prerequisites, they have these things in them, it naturally brings out fruit. Things that will show and prove that, all right, this is a child of God. This is someone who's serving God. This is somebody who's determined to please God. Do we remember what was said in Acts 11.26 about the disciples. Bible says the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. What do you think that was? What do you think made them call them Christians? <laughs> in the marketplace, they'll go to buy something. The way they even buy it is different. The way these guys talk, it's, 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 it's even different. Yeah, yeah. The way they dress, the way they walk, the way they communicate, the way they interact. Is, there's something about these guys. In fact, ah, they're following that man they call Christ. No wonder. They are Christians. Yeah. God help me. Amen. May God help you. Amen. Can Somebody watch you. If, for instance, we were to ask your next door neighbor, would, what would your neighbor say? Not even, is he a Christian? Or, uh, that, that your neighbor who lives next door to you. Um, do you know him at all? Do you know her? What would you say about her? I wonder. Is that not something to ponder about? Yes. These people, they were called Christians. First in Antioch because their life just, there was nothing more. It was Christ. Their style, it was nothing more. It was just Christ. Their communication, it was nothing more. Just Christ. And these defenders of the faith, as I said, they, 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 they are, they have taken on genuine repentance. As we heard this morning, they are reviled at sin. They are revulsed at sin. It causes them, you know, when something inside doesn't sit well, your body has a way of kicking it out. And if you're not careful, it can come out anywhere, anytime. Oh, yes, these people are actively revulsed by sin. And because they, they, they received that original prompting of the Spirit, as the Bible says that, the godly sorrow that they felt, it worked repentance. It worked repentance because they responded. It worked repentance. And that sorrow is not to be repented of. No. Why? Because it's a good sorrow. Yes. A good sorrow that will lead us, if we follow it through, to salvation. Oh, yes. But in that same place, 2 Corinthians 7, 10, he says, the sorrow of the world worketh death. Oh. Don't you hear of plenty of depression around today? Yeah? <laughs> the sorrow of the world worketh death. May God help us Amen. to taste. You see, because these people have genuinely repented, that intrinsic hatred of sin is inside. So now that was on their part. Now Jesus Christ come, came and did his part. Which is that? 
Yes, I've heard your prayer. I have forgiven you. Take salvation. What is salvation? The power to go and sin no more. Yes. We're not talking of gradual reformation. No. <laughs> we are talking of instant transformation. Mm -hmm. You can't pay for that. You know that the government is spending millions if not billions on all sorts of programs to try and do things, make people better, this and that. Christ is the answer. Yes. Yes. Salvation. Instantaneous power to live above sin. No wonder he that is born of God doth not. Actually, the Bible says, 1 John 3, 8 to 10, it says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose. Why? Because of sin. As we heard from the teacher in the morning, Jesus Christ did not die because of mistakes. Because of errors. No. Because of, oh, I, I did it by mistake. No, 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 no. He died for sin. Yes. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that it might destroy the works of the devil. Yes. What are the works of the devil? Sin. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Why? For his seed. Who is his seed? The seed of God, the spirit of God, remaineth in him, yes. and he cannot. It is not physically, you know, as a child of God, you will testify to it too. Mm -hmm. You want to do something, there will be so much war in your heart. Yeah. In fact, you yourself, you say, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, thank you. Huh? Mm -hmm. Unless that spirit has left you. Mm -hmm. Huh? He cannot sin. Because, why? He is born of God. <laughs> oh, may God help us. Amen. That is what makes the difference between the children of God and the children of the, the, the world. And at that point, their names are written in the book of life. Amen. Matthew 13, 8. <clears throat> they also... A third trait, they love entire holiness. They love entire holiness. When we're saying entire holiness, both the experience, self-sanctification, and the actual Christian holiness way of life. That is why the devil cannot easily deceive them with the things of the world. Because, you see, when you love holiness, there will be an intrinsic hatred of the world. When I say the world, understand what I'm saying. Let's read together 1 John 2, 15 to 17. 1 John 2, 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You know why? Because they are not mutually compatible. No. It is not possible. At that sanctification, you see, the love of God, the root of God, the Father, is instilled in the heart. Because that root of sin that was there previously has been rooted out. In its place, the root, the, 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 the love of God has been rooted in our hearts. That's why that songwriter says, it makes me love everybody. Yeah. When you're truly sanctified, you love everybody. Yeah. So, God, with them, they love not the world. In fact, Jesus Christ, our master, says, the prince of this world cometh. And have nothing in me. <laughs> that is fantastic. You know how the devil tries to catch? He picks us. He attacks us. He goes through our senses. By the time he can mesmerize our senses. You know, when <laughs> a, a, some, a trap is set for, some, for, a, for an animal or whatever, it is what will 
Mm, attract, mesmerize. By the time the whole senses are mesmerized on that thing, bang, it's, it, it's all over. But Jesus Christ is here, he's saying, the prince of the world, of this world, he comes. Mm. He has been coming many times. He has been looking for whatever he can look for. But <laughs> he has nothing in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God can help us. Yes. God can help us too. Yes. If Jesus was like that, God can help us too. Amen. And these people, they lead, they are led by the Spirit. And their fruit, their life shows it. That is why, by the grace of God, they are steadfast. Because when the devil tries to knock them, the spirit is already there. My Bible tells me when the devil comes in like a flood, yeah. the spirit of the almighty God will lift up a stand. Amen. 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 Defenders of the faith. Are you a defender of the faith? You see, all these, be using it to check yourself because these are ground rules that, we, that will help us. These people, as they continue steadfast in the faith, they study. 2 Timothy 2.15. They study why? To pass exam? No. To show themselves approved unto God. They're not interested in studying to be able to come to Bible study and pour it up. No, that, that might be a bonus, but they are studying to show themselves approved unto God. May God help us. Amen. They pay attention. Hebrews 2 1 says, Therefore we must give you more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. They occupy. They're busy about the Father's business. 1 Timothy 6 19, learn up, install for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. They are, aware, they are very aware that here and now is not the end of it all. Huh? Laying up a foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Amen. It's all about eternal life. Yes. You see, brother, sister, no matter how many whatevers you have, toys, cars, houses, whatever, the world is passing away. Oh, yes. And the lust thereof. Oh, yes. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's where we're going. Amen. Defender of the faith, are you? Defender of the faith. They keep clear of iniquity. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Mm. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Mm -hmm. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Mm -hmm. And let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. That is why they love not the world. You know, being human, we tend to be forgetful hearers. And that is why all these, we need pegs and fasteners. As you see now, I have a button. It helps to fasten things in place. If I take off the button, it's not necessarily going to destroy my garment. But sooner or later, things can become scattered. If I was to take off the button on my shirt, you say, excuse me, please, you're excused from there. Right. So in the same way, in this in gospel, we have things, we have ordinances, we have, sometimes they may call them traditions, sometimes, but they are all teased out by people of God who, <laughs> let me tell you quite bluntly, they have been closer to God than me or you may ever get. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Huh? They've been teased out by them, and they put them to, no, this is what will work, this is what works. Mm -hmm. We've tried God, we know God, this is what works. Mm -hmm. And they put them together. Some of those things, that's why you find that here, we tend to be, in quotes, conservative. Mm -hmm. We're not necessarily out for the latest. No, 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 no. We know what, we, you see, what we've been given, yeah. it's Ooh. been tried. Mm -hmm. It's been tested. Oh, yes. It works. Yes. 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 And if you take it, you to try it for yourself, it will work for you. It's not if, it will work for you. May God make you a defender of the faith. You know, when we're fighting, it is easy to get weary. Oh yeah, it takes effort. But why do we have to keep on going? Why do we have to keep on striving? Why so strict? Why can we not just... Oh, What's all the big deal? Let, at least let me relax some time now. 
your stand, your work, your defending of the faith will be tried by fire. Here and now, things will come that will, if you're not careful, throw you for not just six. If you are not properly grounded with the Lord Jesus Christ, it will scatter you. Here and now, not to then talk of there's coming a trumpet sound. That is the final test. That is the final thing that will prove whether indeed me and you we've been defenders of the faith. First Corinthians in closing, first Corinthians three thirteen. I take it from eleven. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon the foundation, watch what you're building in terms of what you do with what you know. If any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, 13 says, every man's work will be made manifest. For the day will declare it. <laughs> the day shall declare it. And the day here and that final day of the rapture, the time when the trumpet will sound, because it will be revealed by fire. And fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Brother and sister, this faith that has been handed down to us is wonderful. It's precious. It saves souls. It saves for eternity. It heals. It works wonders because Jesus is the center of the faith. Yes. Are you a defender of the faith? The altars of prayers are open. God bless you.
draw us nearer. Amen. Heavenly Father, draw us nearer. Amen. Make us holy. Amen. Save soul today. Amen. Sanctify soul today. Amen. Fill soul with Holy Spirit today. Amen. Heal sick today. Amen. Draw us nearer to you. Amen. And help us to make heaven at last. Amen. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.